welcome to BMB Basic Training with uh, me, Combat Counselor. Just leaving uh, Fort Leavenworth, Kansas, and uh, quite a historic base where, uh, as you might know, the uh, federal prison is located. On my way back home, so I thought I'd spend some time talking about body mind behavior therapy so we left off last time talking about cognitive confusion and uh, cognitive confusion the uh, cognitive diffusion as Stephen Hayes would call it comes from a theory he calls, uh, he developed and calls relational frame theory. And it adds on what uh, Ivan Pavlov and uh, B.F. Skinner uh, theorized as far as uh, respondent and operant conditioning are concerned. And you may not or may not be familiar with those theories, uh, that research, but um, learning is based on. Uh, very basic fundamental learning is based on uh, respondent conditioning in the uh, case of uh, reflexes and uh, operant conditioning conditioning in uh, in terms of pretty much everything else um, when you think about uh, and I've talked about this before, so I won't go into great detail, but uh, reward and uh, punishment um, and making the likelihood of the behavior more or less uh, frequent uh, based on whether you provide reinforcement immediately afterwards, withdraw reinforcement immediately afterwards, uh, apply a, an aversive stimulus immediately, immediately afterwards or remove an aversive stimulus immediately afterwards. It's a very powerful way to train uh, animals in, including human beings. I don't, you know, uh, sorry for categorizing human beings as animals, but we are scientifically. We're uh, mammals. And uh, but as much as respondent and operant conditioning uh, describe human behavior in, in general, there's a missing piece. And Skinner even realized, even though he uh, didn't like to admit it, uh, later on in his career, in his life, he died in 1991. Um, and and that belongs to cognition, what we talked about last week, you know, cognitive confusion, thought. Cognition means, uh, comes from the Latin uh, root uh, conoscere, to, which means to know. Um, so cognition just means what the mind does, you know, thought. And so we learn to behave and to think in certain ways. And so even the way we think is reinforced um, through operant conditioning. If you think about it, you know, you, you're having a certain thought and something rewarding happens, you, know, you may be more likely to have that thought and vice versa. If you're having a a thought and something aversive or negative happens, uh, you may uh, not want to have that thought. Um, so we as humans become fused with our, our thoughts and it can be really quite perplexing because we believe what we think. And not everything our mind tells us is is 100% true or 100% accurate. Uh, research has shown that uh, human memory 
uh, is not very accurate at all. And if you think about it, uh, when it comes to imprinting a memory, you actually have to be paying attention to imprint something that happens in the present moment. And as I have also talked about before, we as humans uh, tend to spend a vast majority of our time either in the past, you know, thinking about the past, uh, whether it's a positive or a negative event, or thinking about the future, whether it's worry or anticipation, looking forward to something uh, that's going to happen in the future, um, daydreaming, call it. We spend a lot of time there. I would say probably 90 to 95 percent of our time is spent somewhere other than the present moment. And so the thoughts, is, and again, as we talked about last time, you know, the thoughts can sometimes be quite bizarre. Um, normally they're, you know, quite helpful and, uh, and it's just kind of this chatter going on in our heads all the time. And try and pay attention to it if you don't believe what I'm saying. You know, we're talking to ourselves constantly. And so there's really, when you're sitting in a room and there's no other person in the room, there's really two of you in there. There's you and your mind. And uh, your mind, uh, to coin a term, has a mind of its own. So it's chattering away. Some things are relevant, some things aren't. Things, uh, some things are bizarre, and some things are, are relevant. So um, if you get in the habit of believing in everything your mind tells you, uh, you're in for a rude awakening. Uh, and so, first paying attention to what your mind says is the first thing that we want to teach you in body, mind, behavior therapy. And again, we start out uh, to kind of refresh things. Um, I call it body mind behavior therapy because body is the really essential starting point for any kind of therapy, any kind of treatment when you're talking uh, holistically. Um, sleep, uh, diet, and exercise. You know, if you're not sleeping properly, if you're only sleeping three or four hours a night, uh, or you're sleeping 10 or 12 hours a night. The opposite is also bad. That's not good. So we want to make sure you're sleeping well. We want to make sure you're eating well. You know, a good balanced diet. Uh, and there's many definitions of what a balanced diet are, so I'm not going to go into that. Uh, you can talk to a nutritionist if you want to learn more about diet. But a balanced diet, healthy diet, you know, whole grains and lean meats and um, uh, small amounts of... Uh, Oils, good oils, you know, olive oil and uh, the good oils. Um, fat is uh, an essential part of your diet in small amounts. And uh, a large amount of fruits and vegetables. What percentage, you know, uh, a lot of different uh, people have different opinions on. And then the final part is exercise. If uh, you exercise regularly, uh, it increases the uh, feel-good hormones in your brain. Uh, endorphins, uh, serotonin, uh, dopamine. Um, you start feeling better uh, mentally as well as physically. It's also good for your heart. So um, first thing you always want to focus on is, is diet, exercise, and sleep. Okay. Um, so that's the body part. And the reason I put that first is because really it's the foundation uh, that we start with before we really start getting into any uh, psychotherapeutic work. Mind um, involves two things. I've talked about stay present and mindful meditation. Um, that's also one of the first things I'm going to teach you 
is how to be mindful and learn to focus on the present moment. If you can train yourself on a daily basis through meditation, mindfulness, whatever you want to call it, it's, there's no spirit, there's spiritual or, or religious con context uh, to it. It's just simply learning to focus on the present moment. The more you do it, you get in the habit of doing it, the better you get at it. And so you're able to bring up that skill more often when you need it. Okay? And so mindfulness and mindful meditation, I call it stay present, uh, is the M in BMB therapy. Once you learn to stay present, and as you're continuing to learn to stay present, a big portion of what I teach you is based on the mind, and we've been talking about it. Um, being able, first of all, learning to, to focus on your thoughts, to, to realize that you're having these thoughts, and even journal, track them, uh, write them down, uh, become aware of them. Okay, because it's very important that you are aware of those thoughts. Uh, Aaron Beck, uh, a cognitive therapist, very famous, uh, who uh, runs the Beck Institute in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, with his uh, with his daughter Judith, Dr. Judith Beck, um, who's a follower of mine on Facebook, uh, not on Facebook, on Twitter, um, and a uh, great scientist in her own right and clinician. Um, call them automatic thoughts, okay? And they really are. A lot of them are, are automatic. They just kind of come out of out of nowhere. Um, because it's very difficult, as I've also talked about before, to control thoughts. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about it in the future. But, uh, and as I said last week, the more you try and control your thoughts, uh, uh, the harder it gets. Because uh, if you try and control a thought, they come back. Uh, for example, I want you not to think of uh, warm chocolate cake coming out of the oven covered with chocolate icing, okay? So this wonderful warm chocolate cake, warm, the cake's still warm, covered with this rich, delicious chocolate frosting. Um, I want you not to think about that uh, chocolate cake for uh, the next 30 seconds. So let me know how you're doing. I know I'm thinking about chocolate cake. And so you may tell yourself, oh, I'm not thinking about chocolate cake. And you may be thinking about sex or whatever. But the reason you're thinking about sex or whatever is because the goal is not to think about chocolate cake, right? So you're still thinking about chocolate cake, whether you like it or not. Um, another example would be, um, I want you to think of um, slicing a big juicy yellow lemon and biting into it, you know, taking a big bite of this juicy lemon with the lemon and the pulp and the juice in your mouth. Just think about that for a second. And you're salivating right now. Whether <laughs> you like it or not, or whether you admit it or not, you're salivating right now. So, um, don't tell me that uh, you can control thoughts because you can. You're going to lose that battle every time. <laughs> 